Hey everyone, I'm Amanda with Sweet Pieces and welcome to our Facebook Live today. Um, we're doing a Q&A today, so I have tons of questions from you guys. I hope you're ready. I hope you're ready for lots and lots of answers. So I'm gonna give you guys just a couple minutes to hop on and uh, I'm just gonna get myself organized here and I'll be right back, I'll be right back, ready to answer all the questions. <laughs> All right, so how's everybody doing today? Um, it's a beautiful day here on Long Island. We got all the landscapers out. They're out and about doing their thing, mowing lawns, which is always good. Hi, Jill. Jill's watching, Julie's watching. How's everybody doing? How's everyone feeling? This is, um, it's so tough. Isn't it tough? I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it as much as I possibly can because I mean, that's all we can do. Dion, hi Dion, Dion's watching. Um, but you know, it's hard because we just, we don't know what the outcome is gonna be from this. So it's it's just hard. It's hard to, you know, navigate all of this. I mean, I just, I just got a letter from my daughter's school. Hi mom, hi Dion. Um, and they were just saying like how sad they are that they're not gonna have, like do all the year end fun stuff and you know, I'm sad. I'm sad for like, I can only imagine being a senior in high school right now and like not having a senior year. So I, I just, I feel, I feel sad for, for, um, people, but you know, I'm trying not to focus too much on that, you know, certainly stay humble and, and, um, be really thankful for what I have, but it's, um, it's a really challenging time for humanity in general. So it's kind of crazy. Um, Cindy, I think Cindy's watching from Ocean City. Cindy, that's your real name, right? Right? I, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Just clarify that for me. <laughs> um, so I have lots of questions today for you guys or that you guys sent in um, and we're going to answer them. I'm, I'm hanging out in my bedroom today and I'm actually, I'm going to head downstairs with you guys in a little bit, but I wanted to just start up here because I felt like it was a little bit brighter up here and I want to make sure that you guys can um, see me okay. So I'm going to just, I'm going to jump in. I'm going to start. Yes, that is Hop's real name, which is Cindy. <laughs> um, so thank you so much to everybody for joining us and, and watching all of our videos and supporting our business. We really, really appreciate it. You're keeping um, a small business open and you're keeping people employed. And I really appreciate it. They appreciate it. Um, I appreciate the interaction with our customers. So I just, I love this. So thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, Margaret. Margaret's watching too. I know Claudia. So it's a, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm almost ready to get rid of it because it's been in my bedroom for 10 years. And I think I want to go with something a little bit more modern, but I'm not sure. I don't know. What do you think I should do? I'm just, I'm so torn. I do want to paint it though. I never painted it. The fabric's in really good condition. Um, but the chair itself is like a little, it's a little dingy. And now I got a new rug. I don't know if you guys saw this. Um, let me scooch it down here so you can see this rug. My God, it's so amazing. I love it so much. Um, it's an antelope rug. Like that's the pattern. And it's by Floor, F-L-O-R. And it's tile. So they actually like just sit together. Um, so if they get dirty, I can just pop one out and replace it, which is amazing because I have a dog and a child. Um, so things do get pretty dirty around here and we just installed it a few weeks ago. I absolutely love it. But now that I have this like really pretty gray and cream, the chair looks very dingy. So I got to get rid of it. So do my window treatments. Um, these ridiculous blinds that I have behind me, Roman shades, which are, I bought them from Bed Bath & Beyond and they're fine, but they're just, I, I need to upgrade, but that's, Neither here nor there. Anyway, let me jump in and chat about all of these questions. My mom wants the chair. I knew that was coming. <laughs> I gotta figure out how to get it to Florida. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so Cynthia asked a question about if we have any um, champagne coupe style glasses with floral etching at the shop. 
um, and if we also have any floral quilts. John, Murray, I don't know if you're watching, but if you are, have a peek around for Cynthia. If you find anything, text me and I'll show Cynthia. Um, so we, I will say we have so many vintage goodies at the shop, 10,000 square feet of it. So I hope that you jump on and you watch our shop tours because we're always showing all the amazing goods that are there. So definitely stay tuned for that. We're going to be doing one next week. So we'll make that decision and get, get that notification out to you guys. So Allison had a question. Um, she says that we're keeping her sane through this craziness with our videos and that is such a huge compliment i really really appreciate that allison um but her question is she has a narrow hallway with one wall that's a little bit less than perfect and she wants to do something to decorate and camouflage a few small imperfections she's hesitant to do wallpaper because she thinks that it might just highlight the imperfections um what did I do with that wallpaper? Oh, you know what? It's downstairs, but that's okay. Um, so here's what I would say. We carry that amazing temp paper. So I showed you guys how to do my closets um, or how to do a china. I showed you guys a china closet and it's super easy to do. So the temp paper, there's a couple different types. So this, this one here, this is one of my favorites. This is called Moody Floral. I mean, how gorgeous is that? Look at that peony, it's huge. It's just, it's bigger than my head. <laughs> um, this one is really smooth. So let me just like zoom in here. It's super smooth, okay? We have another one. An well, there's lots of them, but one that's coming to mind is the brick. The brick has a little bit of texture to it. So that kind of will hide some of those imperfections. I mean, we've done, we've put the town paper on very imperfect walls and it does it does hide it pretty well now it depends on the pattern you choose even more so than the texture that's on the paper so this pattern because there's so much going on and there's not a lot of um like solid colored space like even though there's like black here there's still like the green leaves and the shadows so this i feel would cover really well as well as any of the patterns that have a lot of pattern so if, you, if you're doing something that's just like a dot or a tile pattern, I think that's where you might still be able to see some of those imperfections, but something that has a lot of pattern to it, I think would uh, make it safe. So I would say 100% jump in and do that. Now the other option you have as far as wallpaper goes is you could go the route of real wallpaper. So I don't know if you guys, how many of you watching have been following, but, um, I started working with Aboffs about six months ago and we are, we've been slated to take over the decorating department. I've been running the department. And so Aboffs does a ton of real wallpaper. So I never really, I, I always knew, I mean, everyone knows wallpaper, but I have learned so much about wallpaper in these last six months. And there's so many like amazing wallpapers, like everything you could possibly imagine. Um, cork and beads and you know every pattern and metallics and um, I mean it's there's everything so if you wanted to do something along that line that wasn't necessarily a DIY route then um, I would definitely recommend going over to Aboffs and um, checking that out now I will say Aboffs is currently closed to customers being in the store but um, we are putting together packages for people so if you say this is what I'm looking for. I can put together four or five books for you. You can come to the store, pick them up. We'll just put them into your trunk and then you can review them at home on your own time. So we're, we're doing a similar thing over at Aboffs with virtual consultations as we're doing at Sweet Pieces. So at on the Sweet Pieces end, if you guys need help with your furniture projects or your DIY projects, we have a page on the website where you can click. It's a virtual consultation page. You enter in all your information, name, phone number, email. You give us all the details about your project. Um, you can upload photos there of your piece that you're looking to do. And then also you can add photos of an inspiration piece. So if you want it to look like a particular finish that you saw on a dresser or in a magazine or on Pinterest or wherever, send that to us. And then we will send you back a comprehensive list of all the products that you need to tackle the project as well as the techniques that you should use with links to our videos and all that good stuff. So we really are totally here for you during this crazy unsure time. 
Um, we want to help keep you sane. We want you to, we want to help you tackle those projects. Um, and by the time summer comes, like we're all going to be like sitting pretty by the pool, right? Cause all of our projects are going to be done. <laughs> so that is my suggestion, Allison. Here's one other suggestion that you could do. We also sell stencils in the store. And that was actually another question that we got from Jan. Jan asked if we sold stencils. We do. And we have a bunch of them are up on our website. And then we actually have a sale bin at the store of some um, additional stencils that are not on the website for purchase. If you're interested in looking through them, we can certainly bring them out back for you one day and you can, you know, thumb through them and figure out if there's one that you want. But we have some pretty, you know, decent sized ones that you could really do a wall with. So that's definitely an option as well. Um, so you can, you know, kind of choose your colors and, and stencil away. So the next question I have is from Tracy and her husband made her a cake stand for their anniversary out of wood. How sweet is that? That is so sweet. Um, and she wants to either paint it or stain it and then put some kind of protective top coat over it to cure it. Any suggestions or cautions? So what I would say is, I mean, you could go either route, stain or paint, but um, you you know, if you're going to go white and you're going to seal it, you just want to make sure that you're priming it because anytime you're painting with white, anytime you're painting with white, you have to be mindful that if you seal it, it could yellow. Even if you're using a non yellowing top coat, it has nothing to do with the top coat. It has to do with the substrate that you're starting with. So you want to always keep that in mind anytime you're working with white. Um, so, I mean, staining it is a great way to go. The pretty wood that's very in, I like that for accessories. So you could definitely do that. And then as far as your protective top coat, our wax and our high performance top coat are both food safe once they're cured. So you can, you can go either way. And, you know, I'm gonna kind of like divert to another question that I got and it kind of goes along with this. So uh, Mary asked if she's painting kitchen cabinets and she asked if, wax is really the best route to go for durability um with her kitchen cabinets and here's what i'm going to say um wax is very very durable we have been selling wax for eight years i can't believe we've been in business for eight years um and it's it's very very durable now it is a natural substance so if you use heavy chemicals to clean your cabinets and like scrubby scrubby brushes then yes your wax is going to wear away quicker than if you are maybe not so cleanly and scrub them down all the time <laughs> so what does that mean that means that you have to re-wax them what is re-waxing entail it's really not a hard process and especially after you wax with one coat it's always going to be easier to put a second coat on because you're not um, getting that initial like absorption into the paint. So that second coat of wax is always going to be a bit easier. So if you don't mind having to re-wax it on occasion, it's going to be durable, um, but there will there may be some touch up that is required. Now, if you want more of that very factory shiny finish, then you should really go the route of either using uh, the Jolie varnish, which we do now have in stock. Uh, we have both the low luster and the gloss. I've played with it a little bit, but I haven't played with enough to give you any kind of solid recommendations. It's, it's great. It's easy to use. Um, I need to test it a little bit more on the whites. So that was another question Mary asked there, there definitely are, even though it's a non yellowing top coat, it could still cause yellowing over white if the substrate that you're starting with has any kind of dyes, tannins, you know, stains in it. Um, so keep that in mind. You may still need to prime if you're doing a bright white and you want to use the, the varnish as a top coat. So, you know, you kind of have to weigh it when you're thinking wax versus top coat. Um, wax is very durable. Jill, she's watching right now. She always talks about her kitchen table. She's got quite a few adorable little grandchildren and she painted her kitchen table years and years ago with chalk paint and then sealed it with wax. And from what I hear, it's holding up very, very beautifully. So, um, you know, you, you certainly can 
use the wax, but you can also use the top coats. You just want to be mindful of your priming. And Ron Dicey is asking, what is the best primer to use? So it's going to be that stain blocking primer from General Finishes. Um, like I said, we, you know, sometimes like on our YouTube channel, we, um, <laughs> we get lots of comments on there and you know, so, lots of them are really positive, but some of them are really negative and na nasty. And I tell you guys all the time, you can't pay attention to that stuff or else like you'll just never get out of bed in the morning. <laughs> so like some, someone once said, well, she, all she does is sell. And I'm like, no, but we do sell product, but we only sell the very best. And we, I truly test everything and we want to make sure that we are providing you guys with the very best products. And the other part of that is we're really here for you as far as um, you know, troubleshooting. So we want to troubleshoot as little as humanly possible. We want you guys to be successful with your projects. So we have really tested this stuff. So, um, that's general finishes stain blocking primer is amazing. Hands down, best stain blocking primer out on the market. It will beat out any other stain blocker that's out there. So, um, I'm sure Julie will post the link to that and you guys can have a peek at that. I think there was another question. Oh, Aunt Amy's watching. Hi, Aunt Amy. Um, so Dawn, she just got the home right finish, Max. <gasps> How exciting. You are going to love it. It is amazing. So um, over the weekend, I actually did, I, I painted my outdoor dining set. I'll show, I'll peek you, I'll give you guys a little peek at that when we go downstairs into the basement. And I tested out a new sprayer. So we're going to be carrying two sprayers at Sweet Pieces. We're going to be carrying the Home Right, the Finish Max. And then we're also going to be carrying um, a Wagner one as well. So I can't, I'm not going to tell you guys yet. My lips are sealed, but it's coming. It's coming soon. I'll definitely keep you guys um, informed. So. I'll give you a peek at that. So it's, I love spraying. Spraying so much fun. It's, it's amazing. Um, Tracy also asked if there was any tips for painting a front door. She can't take it off its hinges and she doesn't have a storm door or a screen door. So wait for a nice day. That's my first tip. <laughs> uh, get yourself a glass of wine. That'll make it a little bit easier. And I would just tape like in the edges where, um, you know, so you don't hit the side or the hinges, tape off the hinges, all that good stuff. Um, it's easy. I mean, honestly, like, I think sometimes we think too much about things. These, any projects that we're recommending for you to do, they're easy. Um, they might take time, um, but they're easy. Like you can, you can do this. Don't, don't put it off any longer. Open that can and just get to it. So Jill, I, Jill just commented, it held up great. The grandkids are not so little anymore. I know. So it's gotten lots of views. So yeah, you know, that wax, like I said, it is very, very durable. Um, as long as it's applied correctly. And if you listen to what Sweet Pieces tells you, then you will apply it correctly. So let's see, who has the next question? Um, this was Mary. So we talked about that. Mary also gave us some suggestions for some new tutorials to talk about our effects, decorative moldings, which are pretty cool. They're up on the website if you guys want to take a peek at them. Um, they're now a special order item for us. So if you purchase them, we'll order it for you and it'll, it'll come in a few days, but they're really cool. They're like these, um, I don't have any here at my house. They're basically like latex moldings that you can apply to the front of furniture to create like detailed pieces. So think about, you know, like something like this, like if, if this were a piece of plastic, I could take it off and stick it on something else. Um, those are what the effects molding are so they're they're pretty cool um so yeah that's a good idea mary maybe i will do that as a um, another video and she also gave us some suggestions for products i love it love it love it oh so mary also asked about the coconut flavoring that i use in my bottled water when i walk down to the basement i'll grab it but um i buy it at hand in stone i don't i'm sure somebody else sells it so i'll get i'll get you the brand mary and and we'll get that up for you Mary also also asked a question about um, if someone wants to go back to school for design to share what the options are. So um, I'll talk, I'll give you a little bit of my story. So I was, uh, yeah, you, as long as it's not like, you know, a picture of me naked mom when I was a child, yes, you can go ahead and, and post a picture on there. <laughs> um, 
so anyway, when I decided that I wanted to go back to design school, I was actually working in corporate America and, um, I hated my job. I hated it. I, I would have like knots in my stomach going, and it wasn't a bad place. I think that, um, you know, God was pushing me in a different direction. I know he was, and he made me like n not so happy about it. And he was, he was really pushing me out of it. And I just, I would, I hated going there. I just, I had no motivation. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a worker. I'm a worker bee. I love to, to work and do and, and get things done. And, and when I don't have that in my life, it's, it kind of, you know, it makes me depressed a little bit. So I just felt like I wasn't in the right place. So I made a decision. Um, oh, that's right. Mom did her, she used the effects on some of her cabinets. So I don't know if you can post a pic mom, but if you can go for it. Um, so anyway, I, I used to actually go on my lunch break to the thrift store and I would get heart palpitations when I would walk into the thrift store. I was so excited to see all these amazing pieces of furniture. And I would just imagine, um, like what I could do with this stuff. And I was like, I just want to be in this world of design and transformation. And, um, it, it was killing me. So I started looking into school. So I originally went to school to be a math teacher. So I do have my undergraduate degree in, um, education. And so I thought, okay, well then maybe I can get my master's in design. And when I looked into that, it was about $50,000 to go to school. And that's, you know, that, that's a lot of money. <laughs> that's a lot of money. So I said, you know what? I don't even know if I'm any good at this. I don't even know if I'm good at design. So I looked into some vocational programs and I found one near us here on Long Island at Wilson Tech. And they offered like an interior design certification program. So they had, I don't know, 15 or 20 classes that you could take on design. And it was, you know, probably a few thousand dollars to do it. So I made the decision to, to do that. And I also did a semester at Metropolitan Institute of Design, which is located in Syosset. And they have a really, really great program. I only did, I did one semester with them of commercial design. Um, which kind of, you know, led me into sweet pieces and it, it kind of taught me how to like lay out a store and a business, which was, um, you know, it was kind of like, I didn't expect that. I didn't expect to have my own retail store. So, you know, it was very serendipitous and again, God's always in control. He knows what's going on. So anyway, um, Mary, if you're thinking about it, I would definitely recommend the Metropolitan Institute of Design in Syosset. They have, um, a certification program that actually will lead you to taking um, the NCIDQ, which is uh, like basically the certification for an actual interior designer. So I am not an actual interior designer. I never like went to go take the test because once I finished those two certifications, I felt like it was good enough for me to at least get started in the field and then I would just kind of see where it took me. Um, I ended up working for an interior designer as her assistant. And then I also started working at Calico Corners as a design consultant. And I felt like that was going to give me a really well-rounded view of the industry and help me to make a decision on where I wanted to go. And after I did that for about a year, um, working for the designer and at Calico Corners, that's when I branched out on my own and decided to start Sweet Pieces. And uh, the way that I did that was I rented a space, a small space in an antique store. And, you know, the rest is kind of history. I rented the space. I started selling upcycled furniture. I started selling the paint and I was teaching classes in a, I don't know, 300 square foot room. And then um, it kind of snowballed. And from there, then we took over the building and we transformed it and yada, yada, yada. And here we are. And here we are. Thank you. <laughs> so, Mary, I would definitely recommend... Um, you know, if you, I always, I, I'm, I'm such a firm believer in, we all have a purpose in life, a passion. Um, I was meant to be in this world of design and I still don't, I don't know where it's going to lead me. Um, I think God is certainly not finished. There's a lot more to come, but if I didn't move in the direction that he wanted me to, I think I would be really miserable still. So if you're miserable and you're not happy with what you're doing, you have to know that you have a choice. You don't have to stay where you are. And, you know, maybe not everybody is fortunate enough 
or, or thinks they're fortunate enough to just quit their job and, and go in a different direction. But you can certainly make moves to, to go in those directions, you know, go to night school, go to, you know, take classes on the side. Um, you know, I know someone who wanted to become a real estate agent. I said, you know, you could do that in your spare time. It, you, you don't necessarily have to just quit your job and, and you know, change to be a, a real estate agent. So understand that you have choices. And, and if it is your God given destiny, God will make a way. He will move heaven and earth to make sure that you get to where you are going to go. And I am saying this from real life experience. Um, if you would have told me 10 years ago when my husband and I were just newlyweds that fast forward 10 years, number one, I'd have a daughter. I would, I would have never believed you. And number two, that I would have my own company with an e-commerce store and I would be working for Aboffs, the biggest Benjamin Moore paint company on Long Island. I would have told you you were insane. I have I had no idea that I wanted to be in the paint world. Um, when I came home and told my husband shortly after I told him I was quitting my job and going to school for design that I was now going to become a paint store. I think he was ready to have me committed. <laughs> I had no business getting into the paint world. I had no business running a retail store. Um, I had no training to do any of that stuff, but it was what was in my heart. And I just, I let God push me into that direction. And, um, I committed myself to it. I mean, we've, we've certainly worked our butts off. Um, but, and it hasn't been easy. This has not been easy, but it's what I'm meant to do. So you have to make sure that you are going in the direction of whatever it is that your purpose is and everybody's purpose is different you know you you just don't know i mean my husband i don't know if he's listening or not but he needs to be in the food world i mean he's like an amazing amazing cook and he does all this research on food and how it's cooked and different processes and procedures and um he needs to do something in the food world so i'm trying to push him in that direction so we'll see we'll see what happens um, okay, so Mary had another question about painting a piece of furniture in Modern Masters metallic paint. So that's another product that we carry. And she needs to prime first. So yes, if you're using the Modern it is not like the chalk paint where you can just, you know, paint over anything. You do need to prime. But you can actually use the Jolie chalk type paint to be your primer. So you absolutely can use that as your primer. And then she's asking what would be a good color for um, the base coat. And my suggestion, if you want it to really be like a gold color, you or any metallic, you should really go in a colorway that's similar to that. So if you're going gold, I would use like the marigold, which is like a yellowy golden color. If you were going silver, I would go into like a gray family. So, and you know, kind of keep, keep it, you know, organized that way. So my mom asked a question. My mom asked if we could show you guys how to do um, like vinyl cutting. And guess what? We're gonna do vinyl cutting. So on Monday, we actually had two questions about this. On Monday, we're gonna be doing a video, a live video on how to use your vinyl machine. I bet I'd like to see a raise of hands out there. How many of you have a vinyl machine that you, it's still in the box and you're afraid to take it out and you don't know how to use it. So give me, give me, a, I don't know, a heart or a thumbs up or something. Um, I wanna see, I bet there's a lot of you cause we hear that a lot at the store. So it's super easy. And I know that we seem like we're experts, but I can tell you, we only learn by Googling. <laughs> So we Googled on, you know, YouTube and we figured it out and then we've just kind of progressed our skills. Yeah, Kim, I'm talking to you. I bet you have a, I think you have a vinyl machine that you never used and it's still in the box. <laughs> so Monday, stay tuned, two o'clock. We're going to be doing, I'll show you guys a little bit of the designing on um, the computer, on your software. And then I'll show you how to cut one. I'll show you how to weed one and I'll show you how to transfer one. And then I'll show you how to actually use it on a sign or a stencil or something like that um okay all right so claudia has a couple of questions um <laughs> kim's googled her brains out so she needs a, a sweet piece of specs so we're gonna we're gonna help you out girl we are gonna help you out 
Uh, let me just make sure I don't have any other questions. Okay. So Claudia had some questions about dry brushing and washing. So we have two techniques that we love to, um, we have two, techni two techniques that we love to do, washing, color washing, and dry brushing. So I use those two techniques together a lot. And Claudia, it really, it will look different if you do dry brushing first and then wash versus washing first and then dry brushing. So I would suggest that you get a couple of pieces of wood some or something excess or use the inside of a door and just play around, you know, do one and then the other and kind of see how it looks. If you do dry brushing first, then I always like to wait at least 24 hours before I wash over that. Because if you don't wait 24 hours and you wash over it, that washing and you're rubbing, that rubbing motion can sometimes pull off the dry brushing. So leaving it set for 24 hours is a good thing. And then if you, um, so what happens is it, when you do it that way, dry brush first and then wash, your wash kind of clouds the dry brushing. So it kind of gives it this like dimensioned type of a look. Um, if you do it the other way around, it's your wash and then your dry brush is sitting on top of it. So it just, it just looks different. So it just, you kind of have to test it and do it and then, you know, see how it looks. And she's also asking about the product I mentioned that creates like a pearlized type of an effect. So that's pearl plaster. So Julie, give us a, a link to the pearl plaster. It is amazing i love pearl plaster it just is, gives this pretty shimmery glow to anything that you use so um definitely give that a try and that's a beautiful product to do a wash with um so it's tons of fun and we have some videos too on youtube on uh, pearl plaster so check that out as well claudia is also asking that she she wants to paint over a piece that was previously painted in wax she did it about four years ago and she wants to know if she needs to do anything other than clean it with crud cutter so and she she's also mentioning that it's very dry and it doesn't feel waxy <clears throat> you if i were doing my own piece at home i would just crud cutter it and paint it if i were telling you claudia what to do with your piece of furniture i would tell you to just give it a quick sand um remove the wax use a little bit of crud cutter and then go ahead and get started. And how do you remove the wax? You're going to use mineral spirits to remove it. Um, so it really just depends if it's something like if it's a coffee table, high use area, I'm going to make sure I remove that wax with the mineral spirits, lightly sand, and then go ahead and uh, clean it with crud cutter and then paint it, repaint it. But if it's just, you know, a little side table or something like that, um, then you can be a little bit less, vigorous with your your cleaning process so jennifer asked this was a good one um what was my most challenging diy project what did i learn after complete uh, after completing it and she is working on redoing her kitchen and it's definitely her most challenging yet so what i'm curious about jennifer is are you just painting your kitchen cabinets or are you actually um, like renovating your kitchen? Because those are two totally different things. So I'm curious. I'm curious to know. And then I also have Melissa here asking if we have paint to... <laughs> My husband just answered. He See, he knows me. He knows me so well. How did you know that was going to be my answer? Um, before I jump to that, Melissa is asking if we have any paint product for vanities. Yes. So you can use either the Jolie chalk style paint or you can use the general finishes. And if you want to shoot us over a virtual consultation, we will um, get you all the products that, you know, we'll give you a list of everything you need and how to go through it and all that good stuff. So going back to my most challenging DIY project. So I have two answers. So the first one is definitely my tile basement. So I don't know how many of you have heard this story, but um, I was, it was just before I was pregnant I thought I was pregnant when I first, was I pregnant? 
I don't know. I was either very newly pregnant or um, right before I got pregnant. So I decided to tile my basement and I thought, you know, I can't really call myself a DIYer if I don't actually do like de construction DIY projects. So I, we tiled the basement and um, it was really hard. <laughs> I give tilers a lot of, a lot of credit. So the issue with our basement was that the floor was definitely not as level as it should have been. So we used way more mud than any person should ever use on a tiled floor. I mean, I think in some areas there might be like this much mud. So, and we mixed the mud in small batches in like, you know, those plastic bins. I can't tell you how many friggin' times we mixed the bags of whatever the heck it was to, you know, for the mud. But at one point in time, I literally was sitting on the floor crying <laughs> and I told my husband that it was fine, that we could just leave the basement like this, half tiled, it didn't matter, nobody was ever gonna come down here anyway. <laughs> and I just, I didn't wanna do it. I just did not wanna finish it. Um, needless to say, you guys have been in my basement many times now, uh, we did finish the tile. It was very, very hard. My husband helped me. And um, also my favorite friend, John Scarola, he helped me a lot. I don't know if he's watching today, but he came over and did the big room with us, which was, um, that was, that was hard too. So thank you, John Scarola for helping me through that. And thank you even when I make crazy decisions like tiling our basement. <laughs> um, so the other, the other thing that I wanted to just mention to you guys when I was thinking about like, what is the hardest DIY project I've ever done? Um, you know, creating sweet pieces was really a DIY project. You know, there is, no, there was no roadmap that we could follow. Um, you know, I did Mary Kay a long time ago. So I, that was one of my first businesses. My own business was Mary Kay. And there was a roadmap, you know, I was able, you know, they told me exactly what to do, how many phone calls a week I could make that would, you know, get me the amount of bookings I needed and how many people I should send invites to to determine how many guests were going to be in each class and, you know, what products. I um, love you too, Aunt Amy. I'll see you soon. Um, what products were the best sellers? You know, I, they, they knew everything. There was a roadmap. And when we opened Sweet Pieces, and I always say we, um, I do own the company myself, but I couldn't do this without my amazing team members um, who have been on this journey with me for a long time. There was no roadmap. You know, we had no, no one told us what products to carry or, you know, how to set them up in a computer system that we could sell them and, and track the inventory and track our customers and, you know, what kind of social media we should do and, and what kind of sales we should run and how do you do have a markdown schedule for a retail store. And I mean, there's so many things, you know, and then I took over the building and um, I suddenly was a property manager of 35 tenants. Um, and, you know, how do you handle all of that? I mean, it was such a huge undertaking, but again, I realized that God was always in control. He was leading and guiding me. And if one of my favorite sayings in Mary Kay was, um, you can eat an elephant one bite at a time. So if you have a project that seems daunting and overwhelming, I want you to not think about the whole entire project and just think about the first step that you need to take. Because if we do think about the long-term project and, and all of those details that go into it, we are never gonna get started because it's so overwhelming and our mind goes into overtime and, and thinks, oh, well, what if this goes wrong? What if that goes wrong? And oh, well, but then I have to do that and how am I gonna do this and who's gonna handle that? And um, you just, you can't think about all those things. So if you have a big daunting project, think of it like eating an elephant. If you do it one bite at a time, you'll get there eventually. And that's really what we've done with Sweet Pieces is, you know, I approached it, you know, I started and I just, and, and don't get me wrong, I have my eye on the prize, which is, if anybody knows me, an empire. We are building an empire at Sweet Pieces. Um, TV show, hopefully someday. If anybody out there is watching that's a producer, please, we need a show. We need our own TV show. 
Um, there's a lot of fun stuff that goes on in Sweet Pieces. There's a lot of inside stuff that's that would be good television. <laughs> um, so, you know, just just keep your eye on the prize. Think about the, the big picture, but don't let it um, slow you down. Don't let it stop you from a, accomplishing your dreams. So that's my su suggestion and advice. So good luck, Jennifer, on your kitchen. I'm sure it's going to be absolutely beautiful. So Margaret sent us a piece of furniture and she wants to she wants a suggestion for the inside. So she painted the outside in Noir, which is the Jolie Black, and she wants to know what she should paint the inside. So I love painting the inside of a piece of furniture in like a pop of color. So pull out a color from the room, whether it's, you know, you have a funky pillow on the bed that has a bright color, pull out one of those colors and throw it on the inside. So, you know, you could do hibiscus, which is a great pink, like a hot pink color. If it's a boy's room, you could do a pretty, um, light blue the french blue color is really pretty from jolie so lot lots of different options and then if you do want to just go neutral i mean the french gray is really really pretty too that'll just be a light gray against the black and then she also left the top i think she left the top oh no that was a different one. yeah she left the top in a natural color so i love the natural and the gray together which i never used to like but it's really grown on me so it's it's really really beautiful so that's, that's my suggestion, Margaret. And then she also sent a picture of a, a little, a cute little nightstand, a French provincial nightstand, and she's asking for a color recommendation on that. So, I, I mean, again, Margaret, it's like the sky's the limit. This is such a cute little um, nightstand. I mean, I could definitely seeing it go in like a funky color, like a green, a bright green would be really fun with a little gold handle. Um, or you could just go really neutral and go with like um, farmhouse beige is a really beautiful um, like beigey clay kind of a color. So that that would be another another option. So another one of our customers, Karen, she actually she sent us like a comment really, and I just wanted to touch base on this. So Karen is she's a decorative painter. So we work with a lot of decorative painters at the shop. So I don't know if you guys know what a decorative painter is. I actually didn't know very much about decorative painters until I got into this business. But you know, there are some amazing artists out there who paint murals, who do specialty wall finishes and floor finishes that have done, they have so much training. Um, they've used so many different products. They're so talented. And we are lucky enough at Sweet Pieces to work with a lot of these amazing people. Um, they've been turned on to our products and what we do. And so um, she made a comment to us about the thing I said the other day when uh, during our organizing video that I feel guilty sometimes that, you know, we do something that's somewhat shallow, you know, just making things beautiful. But she wanted to remind us that our homes are our sacred spaces and the name of her business is actually sacred spaces decorative painting um but they are our homes are our sacred spaces and and it's the place that we feel safe and we feel welcomed and um when we can feel safe and welcomed in our home it really does kind of put our mind at ease so i love what karen wrote um i'm so thankful for our amazing supportive customers you know in this life you can either focus on the negative or you can focus on the positive and that is a choice that we have and when i was younger and i was very depressed um i obviously made the choice to be depressed to stay in that that place now i didn't know i was doing that um but as i got older and i got more help and i talked more to people um, and I learned more, I realized that it was a choice that I was making. And one day I chose to choose differently. I chose happiness. And so if we choose to focus on the negative, that is the direction our life is gonna go in. And um, I think it's that same way. Like, you know, if we choose to focus on the bad things that people say, then of course life is not gonna feel so great. But if you choose to focus on the positive, um, 
it takes you in a whole different direction. I promise. That's also speaking from personal experience. So Karen, thank you so very much. We really appreciate your business and your comment and um, your thoughts during this time. And I hope you're doing well. So if you have a need for a decorative painter, um, we have a pretty amazing list of those at our, our place of work. So if you need something like that done, definitely, definitely um, give us a shout out and we will get you recommended to the very, very best person we can. Thanks, Karen. Thanks. Okay. So next, Adrian. She is asking what type of top coat treatment, wax, wash, or glaze? would I recommend for a surface that is likely to experience a lot or a dining table? So let me just clarify something. Um, a wax is a top coat, a wash is a technique and a glaze is a product. So those are kind of like two, th three different things. So if I were taught, if we were talking about top coats, we would go wax versus top coat. So we talked a little bit about that. So they're both really durable. Just depends on the upkeep that you want to do. Um, if I were doing my dining table and I had two or three children and they made a mess like my daughter makes every night at dinner and I was then spraying down the table with bleach every night, I would probably go in the direction of choosing the high performance top coat as my, my top coat product. Um, I will say, however, that all of my daughter's furniture in her bedroom is sealed with the wax and it, it has held up really beautifully. So it's more about like a dining table, you're gonna spray that down, you're gonna scrape your scrub it, you're gonna wipe it. That you might wanna go top coat, but you can certainly feel comfortable in your bedroom or even like your credenza in your dining room. Like that, I would be, I would feel comfortable doing those with wax as well. Um, and then let me just touch on wash is a technique, glaze is a product. So you can create a wash look with glaze. You can use glaze to create a glazed effect. So if you need some more clarification on that, we did do a live video on it. So definitely look back in our videos at, um, I think, I don't remember what we called it. Maybe you can post it here, Julie. Um, the video we did on uh, waxing, washing, and glazing, those three different types of techniques. Um, so there, there you go, Adrian. So Christine has a question about the china cabinet in my basement that we have paper and she asked if I use a sprayer to, to do it and someone's at my front door hopefully my husband will go get it there he is okay <laughs> um so she asked if we use a sprayer to paint it so can we talk a little bit more about spraying furniture I love spraying furniture spraying furniture is amazing so if you haven't attempted to do it I highly recommend it it's awesome it's really easy um, and ideally it needs to be done outside. So that is the one barrier of entry for that. Um, if your piece is already outside, then great. If it's not, you can do it inside. You just have to like tape everything off. So you do want to be mindful of that. I've sprayed in clients homes before that like the room was going to get renovated. So it didn't matter. So, I mean, I still taped it off, but, um, you can get away with it. You just have to do a lot of taping. So spraying furniture, things that scared me before I actually knew how to do it. Um, could I handle the tool? Tools can be scary sometimes. Um, you know, I really didn't know anything about tools before I started in this business. And I have to give a shout out again to my man, John Scrolla, who has taught me everything I know about tools. Um, he is awesome. So he's taught me how to use saws and um, sanders and belt sanders and grinders and I mean all kinds of very cool things so anyway learn as much as you can about tools if, if you want to go that route maybe we'll do a tool class someday I don't know would you guys like that give us a shout so I was scared for the tool could I could I use it could I handle it um, was my project gonna come out okay um, you know I hate cleaning I hate cleanup I hate it. Uh, I'm lazy. I don't want to clean up. I want to do the project and be done with it. <laughs> so I thought it was going to take a long time to clean and it would be hard to clean it. And 
I just thought the time, the amount of time it would take, like, was it worth it? I can assure you that my thinking on all of those things was wrong. <laughs> Spraying is really easy. It's very fun. Um, I actually sprayed the top coat on my dining set outside the other night in 45 minutes. 45 minutes, literally, from start to finish. Start pouring the, the product into the container to sealing it back up, and it was totally clean. 45 minutes. It was so fast. I couldn't even believe it. My husband threw dinner on the stove and I was done before he even finished. So super, super easy to do. Um, it's really not hard. There's a couple of different types of sprayers out there. There's the type of sprayer that you're connecting to a compressor. Um, it's like, it's a gun that you're connecting to a compressor. That is not the type that I use. I use the one that you literally just plug in. So easy peasy, that's also the name of the game. Um, and they're not expensive. The ones that we're gonna carry in the store are gonna range from $89 to $129. Um, even if you use it twice, I think it's well worth the investment because it makes your projects go so quick and easy. Um, my daughter's crib is another project that I use it on. It's a spindle crib and um, it would have taken me a god awful amount of time to paint that without a sprayer. And I painted it with a sprayer in, uh, it was like no time at all. So sprayers are amazing. Definitely, definitely um, look at that, Christine. And we are gonna be bringing them in. I'm hoping, I've had quite a few calls with Home Right and Wagner, and um, I'm really excited. So I'll keep you guys tuned in. Probably Monday I'll have a little bit more information for you. So another question, let's see here. Um, Patricia bought a desk. She painted it, that uh, bought a painted desk for her daughter. She's 16 and now she hates the color. So Patricia, um, I, hold on one second here. I'm, I lost a question. Hold on one second. Somebody had asked, uh, I bet I skipped right over it. I don't know how I did that. I don't know how I lost it. But someone asked me, they said they were moving and um, they have to clean out their closet and they don't even know where to start, how to organize it. So we did a segment the other day on organizing and if you guys missed that, you can go back on our Facebook page and it is posted there. Um, First of all, I would definitely read the book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying by Marie Kondo. It's a great little read, has a lot of great tips in there, but that kind of started me on my organizational journey. So the first thing I wanna tell you, and I wish I had your name because I wanna call you by name here. Um, if you don't have a normal tendency to being organized, I want you to get that out of your head right now. So that's first and foremost. Um, I am a messy person. My mother can vouch for this and she is watching. I was not an organized person when I was a kid. Darlene, Darlene is the woman who had the organizing question about the closet. So Darlene, if you don't have a natural tendency to be organized, I want you to first of all, get that out of your head. Okay. Um, so once you do that, what you should do is you should just take all your clothes out and dump them onto the bed. Okay. I know it sounds crazy, but just do it. And then you need to go through your clothing one piece at a time and you need to decide what pieces bring joy for you, which pieces spark joy. So when you, you literally, I mean, it sounds cheesy. I know, I know it sounds cheesy, but it's not. Trust me on this one, people. Um, let's, let me grab something here. Okay. Here's something. I don't know if my sister-in-law, any of my sister-in-laws are watching, but um, this is a t-shirt and I just grabbed this off my laundry pile. So I wear this all the time. Um, one of my brother-in-laws just got married and I got a new sister-in-law back in September. This was before all the craziness happened. This is a t-shirt that we wore at her bachelorette party and I wear it a lot to bed. <laughs> Bride tribe. Um, but you, you're going to take this piece of clothing and you're going to hold it in your hands and you're going to think about if it sparks joy for you. Okay. 
it sounds silly, but just do, even if you, you need to like be alone and do this, just go be alone. Just feel it. Like, does it spark joy for you? So what does that mean? What does sparking joy mean? So the emotion that is connected to this piece of clothing or whatever you're, you're touching, a book, a, a, an accessory, a perfume bottle, you want to think of all the emotions that go along with that. So you see, it might be a little bit harder to decide what sparks joy than it does something that doesn't spark joy. Um, and I'm looking at a shirt right now that doesn't spark joy for me anymore. So I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of it. Um, this shirt. So this shirt sparked joy for me some time ago. It did. Um, but I'm, I'm just, I can look at it over there and I can tell it doesn't spark joy for me. So now I'm touching it and I'm holding it, but even just looking at it from across the room, the emotion that has gone on with this shirt, I can now, I can just sense it and feel it. So I've washed this dang shirt so many times that the collar is, it's like floppy now. Do you see it? Um, it doesn't stand up straight anymore. So every time I have put it on and I've actually worn it to work out a few times, um, I feel frumpy in it. It feels like, you know, it's not, it's not tight anymore. It doesn't look good. So even though I still like it, it's still, I like the pattern. I love the colors but it doesn't make me feel good. It doesn't have all positive emotions that are related with it. So I'm going to I'm going to let it move on. I'm going to say thank you. Thank you so much for your service. Thank you for the cute time the cute times I wore this and um those good things and I'm going to just fold it and I'm going to put it in my little goodwill bag and I'm going to let it go to somebody else. So you have to figure that's what you have to do. You have to hone in on that skill of figuring out what sparks joy and what doesn't spark joy. And it's all about emotion and how you feel. So if you have, like when you go to put those pants on, if that zipper gets stuck every time, even if you like them, but you know what, does that, do you want that emotion? I want my life to be full of only good emotions. And listen, I'm not an idiot. Like I know that the, it, it, life isn't just all about the good things, but as much as I can control the good, I want to keep that in my life as much as possible. So any kind of that kind of stuff that doesn't spark joy for me, I'm just going to get rid of it. Let it move on. And you know what? I know that God is going to bring good things into my life. He's going to bring, you know, more really great clothes into my life if I let some of these go. So Darlene, if you're watching, I would suggest that's the first thing that you need to do is you need to get all those clothes out of your closet and start going through them one by one. Clothing, as Marie Kondo says, is the easiest grouping to hone your skill of deciding what sparks joy and what doesn't. So use your clothing to hone that skill and once you're done with your clothing then you can start tackling everything else in your closet so i'd probably move on to shoes next um and i like to do things in groups um so marie kondo talks about that she says it's very important to keep things together in categories and not necessarily the location that they're located in so think about that you might start going through your clothes in the closet, but then you also have clothes in your dresser and you have clothes in the guest bedroom and you have clothes in the upstairs closet. So really what you should do is you should get everything together. All of your clothes should be done at one time. Um, but I know Darlene, you're moving. So you're downsizing. She's going from like 4,500 square feet to like 2,300, which is a big jump. So um, I would start to hone that skill on your clothing. And then once you do that, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to start going through those things. And then just go through, like I said, clothing, I'd do shoes next, I'd probably do jewelry next. Um, then I might do accessories, like scarves and belts. Um, so good luck, good luck, darling. I hope, I hope um, it works out for you. So I'm gonna bring you guys down to the basement with me here take my little tripod and we are going to I'm going to show you a couple of things um I had some questions about um how to get started with a project like like um you know never painted before 
and how do you how do you even start? How do you get started with this? And this is it blows our minds at the store how many people still don't know about us. And like we live in in the sweet pieces bubble, we think everyone knows about sweet pieces, um, and they really don't. So we um, we're here. We're here to help you. We will walk you through step by step. Just give me one second here while I fix this. And uh, we'll get you started on your project. We will get you addicted in no time. I promise you. <laughs> it's That really is what it is. It is quite addicting to work on these projects because um, it's it's almost like instant gratification too. That's a, that's a big thing for me. So I'm instant gratification. I want things to be done um, like right away. So like I'm, I'm kind of like a visionary. So like I look at something and I see it. And I know how it's going to look when it's all done. So it it's hard for me to then process how, like the t amount of time that it's going to take to get there. That can be frustrating sometimes. And that's what I love about our products at Sweet Pieces is that it makes it really easy to just, you know, get things done very, very quickly. So let me just grab my computer here. And this next question, um, let's see. Okay, so Patricia is asking about this desk. And it's a painted desk. Her daughter is 16. She hates the color. She wants to know how she is to repaint it, what supplies she needs, and she doesn't own any tools. So guess what, Patricia? Sweet peas is to the rescue. You don't really need technically to have any tools. So what you do need is you need, um, you need some pre-paint cleaner, okay? I'm gonna bring you guys over here a little bit closer. You need some pre-paint cleaner, okay, crud cutter. You need um, some rags. I meant to bring my shop towels down here and I didn't. You need some rags, some good lint-free rags that are going to, you know, grab all of that grease, grime, oils, pledge buildup that might be on your piece. You're going to need your paint. So Jolie might be your choice or you might choose general finishes. So we have a new page going up on the website. Um, I just want to publicly thank Julie for turning herself into a coding genius to figure out how to put together this new page on the website. We are truly DIYers at Sweet Pieces. We do we do it ourselves everything from our you know website to our social media to um, you know the store everything. We 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 tackle it all. We're not afraid to get our hands dirty. So we have a new page going up on the website called How to Paint. And it explains the differences between the two lines and how, you know, the prepping is going to be different, how the application is going to be different, the top coding. So that's going to be going up. Um, maybe I can get that done today. I just have to finish proofreading it. So I, I will make that a point to get that done for today. So um, you need your paint and then you need your top coat. So depending on if you go with Jolie or general finishes, if you go with Jolie, you're going to use your wax, um, either your, your clear wax or your clear wax and your colored wax if you're going to go that route. Um, if you're going the general finishes route, then you would need some sort of a, top, a, a high performance top coat as well. And then you need your brushes. So you're going to need, if you're going Jolie, you're going to need a paintbrush and a wax brush. If you're going general finishes, you're gonna need a really good quality synthetic brush. We recommend the Klingon brushes. By the way, if any of you that are watching have not used a Klingon brush yet, please do yourself a favor and buy one of these bad boys. This is one of my most favorite DIY tools and I just recently found it. These are amazing. Um, so you need brushes. And then that's really it. So what you need, need, you need a cleaner, you need your paint, you need brushes, and you need your top coat. All the other stuff, that's extra. You know, we, you can purchase a brush cleaner from us. Um, you can do add-ons like stencils or effects moldings or, um, you know, put temp paper in the back of it. There's a lot of other extras that you can do, but the things that you absolutely need, paint, wax top coat brushes cleaner i mean that's that's really it so don't make it harder than it needs to be this should be a fun easy process 
and that's that's really what it's all about at Sweet Pieces is, is having fun and um, getting your project done because that's you know that's important, right? Okay, so let's see the next question. Um, it comes from Mary, and Mary's asking if there is a wax available that has a metallic sheen to it, gold or silver, that can be applied on the Jolie paint. Or is there a way to mix the wax with another product to create a sheer metallic wax? So Mary, the answer to your question is yes! <laughs> um, we have a couple of different products that you could use. Um, these are gilding waxes, okay? They're fabulous. And they come in these little glass tubs. Um, that's what it looks like on the inside. This one's almost gone. You can kind of see it's, it's wax. It's like a, not solid, but it's, it's almost solid. Um, gilding wax should always be your very last step. So you would clear wax and then you would put your gilding wax over the top of it. Wax reactivates wax. So if you put clear wax on top of your gilding wax, your clear wax is going to remove your gilding wax. So you always want your gilding wax to be the last thing. So you can use it over the top of your wax to create um, a metallic -y finish. So you can, you know, just use it to apply in a small area, which is what I did on the china cabinet. Um, or you can use it as an overall type of a thing. You can mix it with um, the clear wax to create more of like a sheer metallic wax. You can also mix it with mineral spirits to thin it out and apply it like a metallic-y glazy wash over the top of it. Now, I wouldn't recommend using the gilding wax on something that is high use. So like if you were doing a dining table, I wouldn't recommend doing gilding wax on the entire top of the dining table. Because gilding wax, it's like a decorative thing. It's, you know, the more you, like, again, if you rub that and you, you wipe it with bleach, it's going to come off eventually. Um, but it's really good for just like de little decorative type of elements or something that's, um, you know, a little side table or side chest or something. If you're looking to do metallic and you want it to be more durable, we have two other options. So you can either go with metallic paint, which I have some upstairs so I'm working on something. Um, they come in little jars. It's They're by Modern Masters. We can post a link for you. Um, they come in a ton of different colors, gold, silvers, pewters, coppers, um, colors even, blues and pinks. They come in all different colors. So you can use those. Those would be more durable. Then you would seal those with the top coat. Or you can do um, the foil. The foil would be durable for you too. So that's what we did. Um, I did these on camera with you guys, these busts. Um, so I only put the foil like in a little bit of areas. I didn't solidly fill this. I could have. I could have made this solid gold if I really wanted to. Like I even did a little bit up at the top there. So the foil is a good option um, as well if you want something metallic. Um, Julie's asking, can we use Modern Masters mixed with clear glaze to create a sheer metallic glaze? Why, yes, we can. Um, yeah, so you can absolutely mix the Modern Masters metallic paint to create a glaze. And I think we need to do that because I don't think we've actually done that yet. So um, stay tuned. Maybe that'll be another video. So yes, definitely go for that. And Mary, I think I answered your question, your other question earlier that yes, we are carrying the varnish from Jolie. Um, do I have it here? I do. So this is the new varnish. Um, it comes in two sheens, low luster and the gloss. It's a, a clear acrylic top coat. So this would replace wax. You would use this in place of wax. We still carry wax. You would just, if you were gonna use wax, you would use wax. If you decide you wanna use varnish, you would use varnish. So I have played with it a little bit. I like it. Um, I can't vouch for, I mean, I can vouch that it's a great product because it's made by Jolie. Um, but I, um, I've tested it and I'm waiting for some results to come back. So stay tuned for that. Um, okay, so Karen has a question about waxed finishes. So she used silver gilding wax on a mirror, but she wants more of an aged look. 
would mixing some black wax with the silver wax accomplish this? So I don't know if you could mix black and silver and still see the silver. I've never tried that, but what you, you could, you could do that. It's not, you know, nothing bad is going to happen. I just don't know if you'd actually be able to see the silver, but what you could do is you could put a little bit of black over the silver. So a few minutes ago, I said that gilding wax is always your, your last step because it, if you put wax on top of it, it could remove it. And it still can if you do that. But if you're going for that aged look and you just put a little bit of black wax and you kind of blend it, I bet it would satisfy your need for making it look more aged. So it would still maintain some of that silvery tone underneath it. So give that a shot, Karen, and let us know how it goes. Liana has a question. She painted a dresser, two coats of two parts white, one part gray and then whitewash it, added a coat of pearl plaster, and then wax it. Wow, I love that. That is amazing. That's not, I want to see those, Liana. Um, she says the piece looks great, but a few parts turned yellowish, whereas the top and the drawers look perfect. Any idea why some parts look yellow? So here's what it sounds like. It sounds like you had some um, tannins or dyes that were underneath um, the surface when you started. So anytime you're putting, um, a product on top of your chalk style paints, that is like a penetrating sealer, you get the potential for some of that yellowy tannin dye product coming through. So Liana used the pearl plaster, which is actually kind of like a sealer and it was wet and she was watering it down, doing a wash. So that's probably what caused some of that yellowing to come through. Um, so how would I fix that? So now that you have put, Liana, the pearl plaster on there, um, it's kind of served as a sealer. So I would probably just lightly paint over those areas and redo your decorative finish, re-wax it, and you should be fine. Um, if it's bothering you, you, you could definitely do that. Um, otherwise, if you think that you might have issues with bleed through, the best thing to do is to seal it with, um, that stain blocking primer from general finishes, like I was telling you guys about before. So this, like I said, is the very best stain blocking primer that is out there on the market. So I would highly recommend using that product to, seal your projects beforehand. Now, Liana, in this case, I probably would not have recommended that you use a stain blocking primer because you weren't using a top coat um, and your final finish wasn't really white. So, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna think a little bit about that when I'm um, directing customers now if you don't have like a solid bright white finish. So, I'm so sorry that you're having a little bit of yellowing issues, but easy fix. Like I said, I would just do a quick, you know, you could do a little touch ups here and there. That's the other thing that I love about the, the Jolie chalk style paint is that if you get, you know, areas of wear and tear or scratches, you can very easily just touch up that product in those areas. You don't necessarily have to redo the whole thing. Whereas with the general finishes paint, if you get, you know, dings and scratches in certain areas, it's going to be hard to just touch up in spots. Like you're probably going to have to redo the whole section. So that is like a little bit of a difference between the Jolie and the general finishes. <coughs> um, okay. So the last question I have here is from Suzanne and she says she has a small desk to paint. She's thinking a white with a turquoise painted inside. And if she paints the whole thing turquoise, maybe use the crackle tax, then white, so some of the turquoise peeks through. Not sure what paint I would recommend for this project. So I've never tried personally the crackle tax with the general finishes paint, but I do know that it works because I've spoken to some other fellow retailers who've actually done it. So you can actually use the crackle tax product with either one of those paint lines. Um, and you know, it's really hard. We get this question all the time, like which paint line would you use? And it's really not about like, which one do I like better? It's really about the project. So 
things um it depends on like the final look that you want it to be this is why we created that virtual consultation page because we want people to send us photos of what they want their final project to look like so that we can better recommend which products for them to use so if you're going for more of a modern type of a finish we're going to recommend that general finishes paint if you're going for more of like a distressed layered old world type of a finish we're going to recommend the jolie paint um you know also like for metal i'm going to recommend the jolie paint for fabric i'm going to recommend the jolie paint um for kitchen cabinets i'm tending to recommend the general finishes more only because of what people want mo many people most people that are coming to the stores to paint their kitchen cabinets they want a bright white finish so not that you can't achieve that with the jolie you can but it's just a lot better maintained with the general finishes. It's a little more prep work. There's a little more leg work that goes into it in the beginning. But um, in the end, I think people will be happier with the, with the final, final product. So I think, um, Suzanne, it would be best if you could get us a picture of what you want it to look like. Then we can kind of recommend what products exactly to use but honestly you really can't go wrong either product line is going to give you a really beautiful finish um but kind of like what you're describing to me it kind of sounds like the jolie finish um is is maybe what you want with all of the the layering and and the texture and everything so that would be my recommendation and i just realized i didn't show you guys outside so let me we're going to run upstairs i'm going to show you um the outdoor set that I did um, with my sprayer over the weekend. It's amazing. So amazing. It sounds like someone's in my backyard. I don't know who's here, if anyone. No, I think it's the neighbor. <laughs> oh, and the coconut stuff. Oh, so let me show you this, if Mary's still watching. I don't even know what my kitchen looks like. I'm sorry if it's a mess. <laughs> so this is the coconut stuff. So pure, pure inventions, water infusion drops, coconut water. They sell a bunch of different flavors. Like they have a green tea flavored one. They have like stress relief. Um, but I love, and I, I'm sorry, my lighting is a little crazy. Ooh, that needs to adjust. Let me flip this. There we go. Okay. So here is my furniture. So, ooh, sorry. Um, this was, it was like brown. It was like, um, I'm trying to think of how I would describe it. Like stone, it looked like stone color. So I painted it in lamp black and then I painted it with the high performance, uh, I'm sorry exterior 450 for the finish and it was amazing it was so easy i mean it took me some time and all of that intricate detail was you know that could have been a lot of work if i was hand painting that i mean forget it um so it was really super easy so take take a look at that i mean it came out so good oh and i already have some bird poop on it excellent <laughs> so Super easy, super fun with the um, with the sprayer. So I would highly recommend that you get into spraying if it's something uh, that you're thinking about doing because it's super, super fun and super, super easy. And I'm just going to go inside because they're cutting trees out here and it's very loud. <laughs> oh, and I painted these. Look at these. My urns. I can't wait to get some plants in them. So fun. Okay. Oh, come on, Shadow. Shadow's coming out. All right. So there we have it, folks. Um, thank you for joining me today. It's been uh, it's been fun. Um, we are going to be coming back to you guys on Monday. Let me just fix this. Sorry. We're gonna be coming back to you on Monday with um, our vinyl cutting series of live video. And 
Um, we're going to be coming to you probably Wednesday and Friday as well. I haven't quite decided exactly what our videos are going to be on, but um, I will keep you guys updated for sure. But Monday is definitely going to be vinyl cutting and how to use the software and all that good stuff. So bring your machines. And, and I will say this, we use... Uh, the silhouette version of the vinyl cutters. There's a lot of different brands out there, I'm aware. I would imagine that the cutting is pretty similar on all of them. So even if you don't use the same type of machine, don't be afraid to just try. It's, it's okay. It's lots of fun. So Pat's commenting, she loves the general finishes. I know it's an amazing product. It's so much fun. So yeah, I used Lamp Black and then I used Exterior 450, which was really, really great. So I'm excited to, uh, to get that patio set all back in its place. I have a cute black and white striped umbrella that goes on top of it. So last summer it was a brown table with a black and white striped uh, umbrella, which it drove me nuts the entire summer. So I'm so excited that I was able to tackle that project. <laughs> um, so I hope you guys have an awesome, awesome rest of the day. I want to just remind you to turn off the news because it can make you absolutely insane. I want to remind you to get your body moving. Go do yoga. Go for a walk. Do something that kind of ignites your body. Um, make sure you're eating something healthy during the day. I know it's really easy to grab um, the chips as you walk past the kitchen. So... Um, make sure that you are putting something healthy in your body every single day. And I do have one final question before I go here. It says, uh, how much paint did I use for the seven pieces? Okay, so we are running a little bit low on lamp black. So I had to use pints <laughs> because I didn't want to take the cords in case any of my customers wanted to purchase them. So I think I ended up using, let me think. I used a full quart and a half a quart, and then I used two, three, four, so four quarts. And um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I think that was way more than what I would normally use for a couple of reasons. Um, I tested a new gun out, um, which I really like but it wasn't well suited for this project because of all the intricacies. I was kind of getting like the, the spray pattern right and it was coming out a lot at one point in time. Um, so for instance, I switched to the home right gun, which is the gun I really should have used for this particular project at the end when I did my top coat and I used less than a quart on the top coat. So um, I would say that if I had used the right product i probably would the right spray gun i probably would have only used about two quarts um initially so what kind of gun did i use so i'm not going to tell you because we're going to be launching that on our website soon but the um other one that i love that we're also going to be carrying at the store is called the home right um super finish max sprayer so that's the one that we'll be carrying in the store. It's the one that we recommend. And then we'll have another one that's really good for like smaller projects. So if you just have like a small side table or a small piece of decorative item, um, we have another smaller sprayer that we're gonna be using, carrying at the store. So anyway, I hope you guys have a really fantastic day. Don't forget to tune in on Monday if you are ready to cut some vinyl and use that machine, get it out of the box and get the dust off of it. <laughs> I will see you guys soon. Have an awesome, awesome weekend. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. Want to learn more? Subscribe now.